I want to talk about something that's very important if you're doing JWT type of authentication, and that is basically how do you attach an access control list to your JWT so that when your user hits different endpoints and tries to do different things in your system, you have a cached list of what they should be able to modify already in your security token. So if we go over here and look at application and go to cookies, you'll see there's a next auth session token. And I believe this is an encrypted token, so you can't just take it and kind of inspect it. This is why it doesn't show there's any payload. And it's also saying that the payload is not a valid JSON object. But there is information on this token, which keeps track of what, in this case, what groups you have access to. And I want to walk you through how I set this up with Next Auth. So my app is using Next Auth, and if we scroll down to the callbacks, this is where the magic happens for the access control list. So when you are using the JWT strategy, which I am, and that's the default, I believe, the other strategy is called session, which just stores a session into your tables. You can create a callback called JWT. And what you do is you check if a user object is set, and if it is, you can actually attach things to this token that's getting generated when the user signs in or when the token is refreshed. Okay, so again, this is only, from what I understand, this is only gonna get called once, but inside of this logic here, what you can do is you can fetch additional information and attach it to the token. So what I'm doing is I'm getting all of the groups a user is associated with, which kind of loops through the memberships table I have and just checks, hey, this user has access to groups one, two, and three, and they are an admin on group two, but they are a member on one and three. It also gets what groups they own. So when you create a group in my system, I keep track of who actually created the group. And so there's like three roles. There's a member role, there's an admin role, and there's an owner role. And I'm getting that information, and I store it directly on the token so that anywhere in my application, I could just use that directly off the token, which is a lot more performant than having to go and look this up in a table every single time to see if they have access to group two or group three, et cetera. There's also a plan. So when the user subscribes in my pricing page, go over here to the pricing page and I'll show you, I have two different plans. I have a basic and I have a premium. So that's another thing that I'm actually grabbing from uh, the database, right? I have to get their subscription. I have to check out what price ID they used if they used a premium, I go ahead and set their plan to premium. If not, I set it to basic. And if they don't even have a subscription, like they never bought one, I set them to free. And now that I think about it, I should probably be checking the expiration date of this so that it sets the role properly, but uh, I'll fix that in a little bit. So again, these two things are fetched when the user first logs in. That's going to create the JWT token, and that's going to put those on the token, which will live on this session token, which is sent on every single request that your user makes on your, your API, your Next.js application. Then down here, there's a session callback where you basically have to take the token that was passed in. You have to grab some information, such as that member list and the plan off the token. You put it on the user, okay? And what this allows you to do, if I were to go to like any of my actions, um, let's look here. So I get this user object that's passed in. And you'll see it has the information already on it. It has a plan in the group members list. And where this is coming from is I'm just calling get current user, which is basically using a next auth method over here to get the server session. And again, since I'm using the JWT strategy, this doesn't need to go and look up in the database every single time. It just looks at the headers. It looks at the cookies, I mean, and then extracts the token. It decodes it, it probably unencrypts it, and then it gets that information that was already passed around in the requests. And that's kind of how that works. Now, to customize this, there are some things you have to do with the types. You kind of have to like extend the global type. So over here on line 24, I say declare module next auth. And then I'm kind of overriding the session with my own custom user type. So by default, I think user only has like a couple things like name, image, email. But if you want to attach things to this user object like I did below, you can actually append an ID, a plan, and a group member list, etc., which again is happening down here. I'm kind of populating those fields as needed. So that's how you can potentially kind of customize Next Auth to have an access control list on your JWT token, how you can actually modify the TypeScript types to have more information so that everywhere in your application, when you try to get the session, it actually has the proper like user information. Also in the front end, 
If I were to go to any of my front end endpoints, I don't know, let's just find like a button. Actually, let's just find something that says use client. Here we go. Additionally, in the front end, you can go ahead and say const session is equal to use session. And that is going to, I think this actually does make a request to the back end because the session has to be decoded and you can't decode the session on the front end. You can't expose that uh, secret key. But like, for example, um, I think when you call this, you'll get back the session object, which has a user on it. So data.user. And you'll see that this user object has the same stuff on it. So in the front end, if you need to do any type of, you know, toggles or conditional shows of buttons, you can have your own helper function that looks through that membership list and allows the user to click a button or hides a button if they don't have access to a certain group or if they're not an admin of a certain group, etc. Okay, does that make sense? And again, when I keep saying the word group, it's because this is a group finding application. You can come in here, you can create groups, and then you can actually invite other people to your group, which sends them out an email, and then they can accept that invite and they can join your group. That's kind of how it works. By the way, all the stuff I'm teaching right now is part of this wdcstarterkit.com that I'm kind of working on. So if you want to get notified when this starter kit is live, go ahead and subscribe to the newsletter. It will cost some money, but it's going to include all the stuff that I just showed you. It's going to have role-based auth authorization. It's going to have these different types of checks in the front end to conditionally hide and show different things based on their roles. I think it's going to be one of the most well-polished projects that I've ever done on my channel. So if you want to see like how some larger project decently clean code looks like, I would consider maybe buying the starter kit. Also, I'm going to have a bunch of videos and documentation to kind of walk you through how to get this fully deployed and how to maintain it on a production environment. Um, so yeah, if you're interested in that, be sure to subscribe. All right, other than that, have a good day and happy coding.